Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church. There's a lot of activity going on here at Trinity right now in the frozen country of New York Mills, Minnesota. As you can see behind me, uh, they're, get, they're decorating the church as they're preparing for the celebration of the birth of Jesus coming into this world and taking on our human flesh so he could be a one-time perfect sacrifice. I don't know where you're at and what churches you may be connected to or your communities and stuff. There's a lot of activity going on right now between the schools and activities and the community activities and the church activities and the list goes on and on. And pretty soon we forget about what we're actually preparing for. The death and resurrection of Jesus and his triumphant entrance into our life on that final day. Now today, um, we wanna thank you for coming and being part of our activities, you might say. We wanna thank you for taking your time out of your activities to be in the Word of God that has made you wise into salvation. And we wanna thank you for being in that prayer partnership and in that financial partnership that you're in with us here at Trinity so we can go out with this YouTube message that we've been able to do and it's been a lot of fun to be able to be doing this with you and for you. As always, if you haven't had an opportunity, make sure you subscribe to this channel. That way you're updated all the time and it helps us with our analytics of what we're doing in this mission and ministry and how we're looking at expanding it and, and enabling it for people like you to share the gospel of Jesus Christ in the midst of this dead and dying world. Down beneath the chasm Then lay between us How high a mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven spoke your name into the night and through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written and Jesus Christ my living hope could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame Cross is spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope.
to fellow believers in Jesus Christ, John in our gospel lesson, John the baptizer, is going to call us to fruits of repentance. Now we know by no means can we do something to be forgiven for. We know even our repentance comes out of that comfort, hope, and certainty of that trust that God put into each and every one of us in our baptisms. See, we were baptized into that death. It was totally passive on our parts. We couldn't do anything about it. But the power of the Word of God was poured upon us as we were baptized in that death and given forgiveness, faith, and life eternal. So in our beginning, our invocation, we call it, is are the very words that were said in each and every one of our baptisms. So we make that beginning with great joy in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, today's gospel lesson... Oh, that happens sometimes, doesn't it? We get upside down in the Word of God, but the pure Word now comes to us. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, the third chapter, beginning with that first verse. Now in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is the one referred to by the Isaiah the prophet when he said, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ready the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Now John himself had a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem was going out to him, and all Judea and all the district around the Jordan. And they were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not suppose that you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham for our father. So I say to you that from these stones God is able to raise up children to Abraham. The axe is already laid at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. As for me, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, and I am not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand. And he will thoroughly clear his threshing floor, and he will gather his wheat into the barn, and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. In the name of Jesus. You know, one of the things we are blessed with in our rural small town communities is to have both hospitals and medical clinics in our small communities that are being supported by larger organizations outside of our area. You see, in our rural small town communities, in most cases, we could not support such clinics and hospitals. But thanks to some forethought, mainly of nonprofit hospitals and medical facilities, uh, they have come and established in our rural small town communities doctors and nurses and PAs and chiropractors that can serve us. And we're always thankful for them. And we pray on a regular basis for those physicians and caregivers that God would bless them to use their gifts to the best of their abilities. Now, when a physician, a doctor, a nurse, a PA, a chiropractor, a psychologist, whatever, when they are working with us, I've always wondered this. If a doctor came to you and I and said, you have a disease that is going to kill you. There's no way around it. There is absolutely, positively, 100% sure through all our tests, exams, and evaluation, you have a disease that you are 100% going to die from. Of course, now when we hear that, our, our brains would go, oh my goodness. And maybe it has for some of you as you've dealt with um, different devastating diseases amongst yourself and maybe family members that you have and friends. But then the doctor looks at you and says, but I have some good news. I can guarantee you through our medical science that we've been doing throughout the, the years and through all the testing we have done and through all the application that we have been doing towards this disease with medicine and surgery and physical therapy and the rest of it, we are able to cure you of this disease 100% if you allow us to go forward with this role. What would you do? 
Would you complain? How dare you embarrass me that you would say that I have a disease? Would you, would you uh, put out emails? Would you go out on social media? Would you, uh, I don't know, the list goes on and on, telling everybody how bad this doctor made you feel? Or would you tell the doctor, whatever you see best for us that can preserve my life, please use us. This is the situation with John the Baptist as we see in our text today in Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Jesus' cousin, John the Baptizer, was out in the wilderness calling people and telling them of the disease that they had that was going to kill them for eternity. He says in chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, he says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who has spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of the one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. You see, John is saying to those as he's preparing the people around him for the coming Messiah, the one who would cure them of the disease of sin, death, and power of the devil, that there was no way they could get away from, that there was nothing that could help them from saving themselves, no physical physician could help them and save them, only the Messiah. And he says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Messiah, Jesus, the one who took on human flesh, the one for 33 years who walked on this earth, fulfilling every part of the law, curing the disease that is within us, and then applying to us a perfect cure. And those that were around John, through his precious blood, a blood transfusion, you might say, a blood transfusion that would win them from sin, death, and power of the devil. And John is pointing to the fulfiller of the prophecy of the prophet of Isaiah. He's gutting us and those around him of the disease with the law. And now he brings restore. In chapter 3, verses 7 through 10, he, he talks about some of the disease that were around him. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our, as our father. I tell you, out of the stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Bearing fruits of repentance. And did you notice he didn't say, now you got to bear fruit so you can do this. He did not say, look, you must do A, B, C, D, E, F, G in order to receive he says the kingdom at heaven of heaven is at hand. The creator of the heavens and the earth, the Messiah, Jesus. The one who is here now bringing salvation for the whole world. He says this is what creates repentance. In the trust and the promise of God's word, as he showed through the fulfilling of the prophet of Isaiah, John's pointing to the Messiah and warning the people of the disease that's within them that they must bear now as a repented, redeemed child of God to bear fruit. Now, when John's talking about bearing fruit, he's not talking about just being sorry for our sins or having sorrow. But true repentance is trust in the promise of God's word, which brings fruit of repentance in a life because we are forgiven, we get to live out a forgiven life. I wonder sometimes, if John was in our church today and he was gutting us with the law, just like the law God always does in his perfect word, what our reactions would be. Would we be contacting our, 
our, our local leadership in our church and saying, you know, I don't know about that John the Baptist. Uh, boy, he's kind of, he really makes me feel bad about things. Would, would they make a contact saying, you know, I just want to feel good about myself. You see, that was the problem with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They felt good about themselves because they were sons of Abraham. Would we tell people around us, well, you know, that John the Baptist, he's not from here. He doesn't belong here. He's not one of us. How would he be handled today? Because really in our churches, the word of God must come to us. And gut us of any self-righteousness, put us to death, leave us hopeless. Listen to John as he says in chapter 3, verse 12. He says, his winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. You know, something unique about wheat when it's being harvested, I don't care if it's in the days of Jesus where they would harvest it with a scythe, like a, like a big knife on a big stick, you might say, for those that aren't familiar with it. And then when they bundle it up, they would take it into what they call a threshing floor. And it was a depression in the ground that had hard ground. And they would beat that wheat and so that the chaff that is on the wheat would get separated. And then on a breezy day, they would throw it up in the air and the chaff, the light chaff would be blown away and the wheat would, kernels would come down. Combine does it today too as you watch a farmer out there farming. It's still a, a sieve thing beating out into the, or a rotary unit inside a combine and it's beating the chaff off of the, the seed and then a, there's a fans configuration in there that blows the chaff out. You see all wheat seed has chaff. All human beings con conceived in a mother's womb has sin. And the separating of that chaff of sin has been done, yes, you might say, with a wind. And this writing today, as John is telling, of where Jesus was going to baptize with fire coming, we see that at Pentecost where the fire of the Holy Spirit came upon God's people to tell the good news of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and what he accomplished for on a cross. And so that the chaff of sin, death, and power of the devil would be lifted on the, uh, away from them by the power of God's word. And they were baptized by the power of that God's word and given a kernel, a heart of a new life. This is the fruits of repentance. You see, as a redeemed, forgiven child of God, washed in the blood of Jesus, we have been forgiven for the chaff that's in our lives that we've been born with and the lack of fruit of repentance that we have done. But as a forgiven child of God, by the death on the cross for us all and his glorious resurrection, it leads us in a life of repentance and forgiveness that is con perpetually continuing until the day that we're in front of our God for eternity. So let's ask ourselves five questions as a Christian church as we look at how God leads us in repentance in view of what he's done for us on a cross and redeemed us from sin, death, and power of the devil, and how we now get to live that resurrected life of forgiveness. Here are five questions that we get to look as we as the Christian church. So when we look at John saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, our first question is this, how does the coming of him who reigns over the heavens change this congregation's mind? Remember, repentance means always to change the direction you're going. Change the mindset that you have. Number two, how does this change your mind? Number three, as you consider those other questions, what promises of God are you struggling to believe? Number four, which commands are you having trouble 
accepting. And finally, number five. What might it look like for baptized believers in Jesus to live out their repentance in these gray and latter days? Those are some questions I pray today create a struggle in your mind. As you view the fruits of repentance that God enables you to carry through as a forgiven, redeemed child of God. Too often in the church, we're living in the chaff of this world and our self-idolatry in this world about how we make decisions of how we feel. Job wrote in chapter 19, Oh, that these were written on stone. All as, as they are written with lead and a stylus. He says, I know that my Redeemer lives. See, it's not how I feel. That's how I know. And too often the church is living in survival and scarcity instead of the grace and abundance that's in Jesus Christ. And my dear children of God, God has fully, freely, completely, 100% forgiven that. Now he creates that new heart in us. As we ask those questions of ourselves, as a redeemed child of God, forgiven in the blood of Jesus, how do I get to now by the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of God's word, get to bear fruits of repentance? I invite you. Um, if you look at our webpage here at Trinity New York Mills, my email address is on that. Contact me. Let me know. You got questions? Hunt me down. You got comments? Let me know personally. And let us open the word of God and reason together as we bear fruit of repentance in life of forgiven, redeemed, forgiven children of God. Of course, that comes to us in one way. His name is Jesus Christ. To him we give that glory and that praise and adoration. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together today. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing as you prepare for the coming Jesus, that final coming, that resurrected Jesus who comes triumphant and brings you and I home to his presence for all eternity. Receive the blessing that only he can give us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor. Give you his peace. Amen.